Hello loves. Yes, yeah, so we are here with another relationship topic and today I wanted to speak to you all about six ways to heal heartbreak fast. So believe it or not, the average person does not know how to heal properly. Yes, there is a method and technique to almost everything and that's what we're talking about today. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Coach Kara. So the first thing that has to be done in order to get to that place of peace and lightness, the one thing you should do before you start this process is already have it in your mind that you're choosing to heal. All right? You have to choose to heal. Most people don't do that. They just allow everything to work its, on its own. And you probably shouldn't do that. So having a mindset of wanting to heal faster. Yes. Okay, next. You want to plan to grieve. And I know that may sound a bit outlandish, a bit far-fetched, whatever. But trust me, there's a method to my madness. Plan to grieve. And why is that important? Well, most people typically allow themselves to grieve anywhere they allow it to get out of control and that's what we're trying to do control our grieving process you know I don't want you snotting and crying while you're driving or while you're in church or in the break room no plan a time each day to when you choose to grieve you know if it's after you have a shower or if you have some rage and you go to a rage room, you know, go on the beach or in the pool and just sit by the, you know, sit by and, and just cry your eyes out 15, 20 minutes. You want to put a limit to it. Yes. You want to limit when you grieve. Why? Well, because if you overdo it, well, then you're going to always overdo it. You know, many people, they'll overthink it and become obsessed with the matter and then now you are in a state of depression yes we're not trying to do that so we're trying to get through this process as as painless and as quick as possible so when you plan to grieve you get it all out the next important thing to do is to replace that with something positive See, when you release the negative, you have to always bring something back in to overshadow that. You know, go read a good book or go and have just a glass of wine or have some good conversation or love on your kids. Do something that is going to uplift you, inspire you. Be around positive people. That means not listening to sad songs or watching discouraging movies. No, we're not trying to do that. You have to always replace the negative with something positive. Guys, it is like so freaking hot right now. Um, but, yes. Grieve. Release the negative. Replace that negative with something positive. Each day. Until you feel you don't need to do it as often. Next. We need to do some introspection. We need to come to... You know the conclusion that things have ended I have to own some have some ownership in this be accountable for what it was that you did or did not do yes think about what it is that you could work on those sorts of things for as many days as you need to and once you've gotten that done and you've been thinking about what's been going on or what could have you know the should have what it could have Another major factor is forgiving. I know it's it's challenging, especially if you have anger in there as well. But see, that goes back to releasing and getting that all out. And this process can, you don't want it to, to last longer than a couple of months. Okay, we don't, we're not trying to do that. That's just, that's overkill. Forgiving, you're going to have to forgive yourself for what it is that you did or did not do to protect yourself or if you hurt someone forgive yourself for being part of that 
Yeah. Forgive the other person for what they've done. See, that's the hardest thing, especially if you feel you've been wronged. It's forgiving the other person. Look, a lot of times, guys, most people cannot control who they are or what it is that they are. Some people are just like born savages. They may not be able to help that. So you have to forgive them for being that way. There's very little that you can do about that, okay? You was not that person to change them. So just think about that. Make it all make sense. Feel better about it. Move on. The next major important thing is sleep. Sleep, getting the adequate amount of sleep. And why is that important, Kara? Well, when you've been through any sort of trauma or you've been through some sort of pain, your body needs to rejuvenate. It needs to restore. It has to replenish itself. It has to you know, rejuvenate the nerves in, the, in your uh, nervous system. So you need to get those eight to 10 hours of sleep because especially if you have fallen into a state of anxiety or <clears throat> low level depression, you definitely want to sleep because when you wake up, you feel better. You're not bogged down by your thoughts and, and those sad and dark feels, you know, it, it helps you to move on. And another a process about grieving properly is to never grieve before you go to sleep. You want to have that done at least an hour before you go to bed. You want to get all of that out, replace it with something positive, and then you can lie down and go to sleep and sleep peacefully. So you wake, you wake up peacefully in a peace, peaceful state of mind, okay? And so you can do this process, it's only six steps, for as long as you need to. And so what happens when you know you're beginning to heal, you'll begin to think about the matter less, about that person. You may even have some regrets. Like, oh my God, I couldn't believe I was with this person or I can't believe I did that, but whatever, you know? You begin to think about it less. You may not have to plan a day to grieve. It may go down from seven days a week to maybe just three. That's, that's progress. And you'll begin to feel lighter each day. You'll be able to feel, back, feel a state of normalcy, you know, on the horizon. You're, you, you're, you've gone over that, that hump. That's the hardest part is trying to get over that hump. But once you do, you'll realize, hey, everything happened for a reason. You'll just have a better mindset of, of what transpired and why it did. You know, it's, there's a learning curve in everything, okay? Either it's positive or negative. You have to learn from, from what happened, okay? And when you feel that you've learned something and you've got something out of it, you know what it is that you need to do moving forward, well then you probably have healed to the, to the point to where you can actually move on and begin to date again. But you, gotta, you have to heal people. We're not healing the way we need to because when you move on, you want to be able to be dateable. You don't want someone to destroy you to the point to where no one else will want you. That's not what we're trying to do. So if you're trying to heal and get back out there in the dating game, there's a way to do it. And this is the best, one of the best ways to do it, but you have to do it properly. Okay. We're not trying to wallow and be consumed by our sadness. No, we're not trying to do that. At least not for too long. That is okay. All right. So I wanted to bring you guys back out here in this hot ass nature. <laughs> that we have been consumed with for the past couple weeks. But yeah, guys, be peaceful. Find that peace, get back to that peaceful state. Come to places like this and clear your mind. Become whole again, rejuvenate. You'll be all right, <laughs> okay? All right, my loves, I thank you so much for joining me today. Hopefully this has been insightful for you. If you have a more unique situation and you need further consultation, all of my information will be linked down below. But that is all for now. I thank you for joining me. Until next time.